Did you know that the very act of giving, something often celebrated as a virtue, can sometimes be your biggest downfall? We're taught to give generously, to help others whenever we can. But what if I told you that overgiving could be silently draining your energy, happiness, and even your self-respect? If you want to truly make a difference in the lives of others, you need to do this one thing first. Learn how to care for yourself. It might sound counterintuitive, but without understanding the balance between giving and preserving your own well-being, you risk falling into a trap that many people don't even realize they're in. Overgiving isn't just about exhausting your resources. It's about losing touch with your own needs, boundaries, and ultimately, your sense of self. In this video, we're going to explore why overgiving can be so harmful and how shifting your perspective on generosity can actually lead to a more fulfilling and sustainable way of helping others. From the wisdom of the Stoics to a simple garden analogy that will change the way you think about giving, we'll dive deep into the core of what it means to be truly generous without sacrificing yourself in the process. So, let's start this journey together and discover how you can give more meaningfully live more authentically, and inspire others along the way. 1. The problem of overgiving. Have you ever felt like you're running on empty, constantly giving and giving, only to find yourself burned out and depleted? Imagine a candle burning at both ends, providing light to others but rapidly consuming itself. That candle is you, and each time you offer your energy, time, and emotions to others without replenishing yourself, you are losing a little more of your own light. You might be the one people rely on, the steady rock in the storm, the giver who always has a hand to lend. It feels good, doesn't it? Helping others brings happiness and fulfillment, like a warm glow spreading inside you. But what happens when that warmth fades? when your candle has burned down to nothing but a flicker. Many of us, especially those in the modern world, fall into this trap of overgiving. We care deeply, so we give freely, often to the point where we have nothing left for ourselves. This is not just a personal issue, it's a societal one. The culture we live in often equates constant self-sacrifice with virtue and nobility. We wear our exhaustion like a badge of honor, convincing ourselves that if we're tired, stressed or overwhelmed, it means we're doing something right. But here's the hard truth. Caring for others at the expense of yourself isn't sustainable, and it certainly isn't healthy. It leads to burnout, resentment, and a diminished capacity to truly help those we care about. Now. Think back to a time when you felt overwhelmed by the demands of others. Perhaps it was during the holidays, juggling work, family and social obligations. Or maybe it was just another hectic week where everyone seemed to need something from you and you couldn't find a moment for yourself. Remember that feeling of exhaustion, that nagging thought that you just couldn't keep up. That's the problem of overgiving and it's a problem many of us know all too well. In today's chaotic world, it's more important than ever to find a balance between helping others and taking care of ourselves. This balance is not about selfishness. It's about survival. It's about recognizing that you can't pour from an empty cup. If you don't take care of yourself, you won't have anything left to give. This is where the ancient wisdom of Stoicism can provide a guiding light. Stoicism teaches us the art of self-care, not as an act of indulgence, but as a necessary foundation for a life of purpose and fulfillment. 2. The Stoic Perspective on Self-Care Let's turn to the Stoics, the ancient philosophers who understood the delicate balance between caring for others and maintaining one's own well-being. Stoicism isn't just about enduring hardships with a stiff upper lip. It's about living a life of virtue, wisdom, and inner peace. At the heart of this philosophy is the belief that true strength doesn't come from giving everything away, but from recognizing and appreciating your resources, 
your time, energy, and emotions, and using them wisely. Imagine your life as a cup, representing your energy and well-being. Each time you give to others, you pour a little bit out of that cup. If you keep pouring without refilling, what happens? Your cup runs dry. The Stoics understood that it's not only important to give, but also to ensure that your own cup is full. This means taking the time to nurture yourself, to rest, to engage in activities that rejuvenate you. Only then can you continue to give to others in a meaningful and sustainable way. One of the most profound lessons from Stoicism comes from Epictetus, a philosopher who rose from slavery to become one of the most revered thinkers of his time. He said, he is a wise man who does not grieve for the things which he has not, but rejoices for those which he has. This isn't just about material possessions, it's about your inner resources as well. It's about understanding that you cannot give what you do not have, and that true generosity begins with self-care. Now let's bring this down to a personal level. Think about a time when you felt drained, when your energy was so depleted that even simple tasks felt like monumental challenges. Maybe you were trying to help a friend through a tough time, or perhaps you were putting in extra hours at work to meet a deadline. Whatever the situation, your cup was empty, and yet you kept pouring. How did that feel? And more importantly, what was the quality of the help you were able to provide? When we're running on empty, our ability to truly be there for others diminishes. We become irritable, resentful, and even bitter. That's not the version of yourself you want to offer the world. The Stoics teach us that by taking care of ourselves first, we're not only preserving our own well-being, but also ensuring that we can continue to be of service to others. This is not selfishness, it's wisdom. It's understanding that in order to be truly helpful, we must be in a place of strength, not weakness. So ask yourself, how full is your cup right now? Are you pouring from a place of abundance, or are you scraping the bottom, giving others the remnants of your former vitality? 3. The Garden Analogy – Sustainable Help To better understand this concept, let's turn to a powerful analogy – the garden. Picture two gardens side by side. One is lush, vibrant and bursting with life. Flowers bloom in every color and ripe fruits hang from the trees. The other garden is withered, overgrown with weeds and barely clinging to life. Now, ask yourself, which gardener has more to offer their community? The answer is clear. The garden that is well tended, nourished and cared for is the one that can provide for others. It's a source of beauty, sustenance and inspiration. The withered garden, on the other hand, has little to offer because it hasn't been properly cared for. This garden analogy is the essence of stoic self-care. Tending to your own well-being isn't selfish, it's necessary. It enables you to truly help others in a sustainable way. Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher emperor said, what stands in the way becomes the way. Your self-care isn't an obstacle to generosity, it's the very path to it. By nurturing your well-being, you create an abundance from which to give. You're not depleting yourself, you're sharing your overflow. Think about a time when you were at your best, when you felt energized, fulfilled and content. Perhaps it was after a long-awaited vacation, a weekend spent doing something you love, or simply a day when everything seemed to go right. During those moments, you likely found it easier to be generous, patient and kind. That's because your cup was full, your garden was thriving. When you're in that state of abundance, giving to others doesn't feel like a chore. It feels natural, effortless even. Now, contrast that with a time when you were stretched thin, when life's demands had drained you to the point of exhaustion. During those moments, even the smallest requests from others might have felt overwhelming. Your garden was withering and you had little to offer. This is why it's so crucial to prioritize self-care to tend to your garden regularly so that you can continue to provide for others without depleting yourself in the process. 
In our fast-paced world, it's easy to neglect our own needs in favor of meeting the demands of others. But the Stoics remind us that by taking care of ourselves first, we're actually becoming more effective in our generosity. A thriving garden doesn't just benefit the gardener, it provides beauty, sustenance and inspiration for the entire community. So, the next time you find yourself feeling guilty for taking time for yourself, remember this. You're not just doing it for you, you're doing it for everyone who relies on you. As we journey through life, let's strive to be that lush, vibrant garden, full of life and energy, with more than enough to share. By embracing this stoic principle of sustainable help, we can ensure that our giving is not only generous, but also joyful and fulfilling for the long haul. 4. True Generosity – Giving Without Expectation What does it mean to be truly generous? At first glance, generosity might seem straightforward, giving your time, resources or energy to others. But true generosity goes deeper than that. It's not just about the act of giving, it's about the mindset behind it. True generosity is giving without strings attached, without expecting anything in return. It's about offering what you have freely with no hidden agenda or expectation of reciprocation. Now, let's think about a time when you gave something to someone, whether it was a favor, a gift, or even just your time. Did you secretly hope for something in return? Maybe you wanted gratitude, recognition, or perhaps a favor down the line. It's natural to have these feelings. After all, we're human. But this is where true generosity sets itself apart. When you give without expectation, you're freeing yourself from the burden of waiting for something in return. You're not keeping score. You're simply giving because you want to, because it feels right. This concept might feel nostalgic, harking back to a simpler time when helping a neighbor or lending a hand was just what people did. Perhaps you remember a time when communities felt closer, when people looked out for each other without needing a reason. This spirit of generosity, rooted in connection and compassion, is something we can all strive to rekindle in our lives. The Stoics had a clear perspective on this. They believed that the greatest acts of generosity are those that are done quietly, without fanfare. Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher-emperor, famously wrote, Waste no more time arguing what a good man should be, be one. This statement encapsulates the essence of true generosity. Don't overthink it. Don't do it for praise or recognition. Just be generous and let your actions speak for themselves. Think about a time when you received help from someone who expected nothing in return. Maybe it was a small act of kindness from a stranger, or perhaps it was a friend who helped you through a tough time without making you feel indebted. How did that make you feel? Likely, it was a powerful moment of connection, one that left a lasting impression on you. That's the beauty of true generosity. It creates ripples that extend far beyond the initial act. On the flip side, think about a time when you felt obligated to return a favor or repay someone's kindness. That sense of obligation can weigh heavily on you, turning what should be a positive experience into a source of stress. This is why giving without expectation is so liberating. It allows both the giver and the receiver to experience the joy of generosity without any of the baggage. True generosity also has a way of returning to us in unexpected ways. When you give freely, you're contributing to a cycle of kindness and compassion that often finds its way back to you. It might not be immediate, and it might not come from the person you helped, but that positive energy you put out into the world has a way of coming full circle. In our daily lives, practicing true generosity can be as simple as offering a kind word, lending a hand, or sharing your time. The key is to do it without expecting anything in return. This might feel challenging at first, especially in a world that often emphasizes transactional relationships. But with practice, 
you'll find that giving freely brings its own rewards, peace of mind, a sense of fulfillment, and deeper connections with those around you. The Art of Saying No In a world that often glorifies saying yes to every opportunity, every request and every favor, the art of saying no can feel like a radical act. But here's the truth. Learning to say no is one of the most powerful tools you have for protecting your well-being and maintaining your energy. It's a skill that allows you to set boundaries, prioritize what truly matters, and ensure that you're not spreading yourself too thin. Think about a time when you said yes to something you didn't really want to do. Maybe it was an extra project at work, a social event you felt obligated to attend, or a favor for a friend that left you feeling drained. Afterward, you might have felt resentful, exhausted, or even frustrated with yourself for not saying no. This is a common experience, and it's one that many of us struggle with. We don't want to disappoint others, and we fear that saying no might damage our relationships or make us seem unkind. But here's the thing. Saying no doesn't make you a bad person. It makes you a wise one. It's about recognizing your limits and protecting your time and energy so that you can give your best to the things that truly matter. When you say yes to everything, you're diluting your focus and spreading yourself too thin. But when you say no to the things that don't align with your values or priorities, you're making space for the things that do. The Stoics were masters of this concept. They believed in the importance of focusing on what is within our control and letting go of what is not. This includes our time and energy. By saying no to distractions, unnecessary obligations and things that don't serve our higher purpose, we're able to focus on what truly matters. As Epictetus once said, he who is not a slave to external things is the master of his own destiny. Saying no can also be an act of self-respect. It's a way of honoring your own needs and boundaries. When you say no to something that doesn't serve you, you're affirming your own worth. You're acknowledging that your time and energy are valuable and that you deserve to spend them on things that truly matter to you. Of course, saying no isn't always easy. It can be uncomfortable, especially if you're used to being the person who always says yes. But with practice, it becomes easier. Start by identifying your priorities. What are the things that truly matter to you? What are the commitments that align with your values and goals? Once you have a clear sense of your priorities, it becomes easier to say no to the things that don't fit. Think back to a time when you said no to something that didn't serve you. How did that feel? Maybe it was difficult in the moment, but afterward, you likely felt a sense of relief and empowerment. By saying no, you were able to protect your time and energy and focus on what truly mattered to you. Remember, Saying no doesn't have to be harsh or unkind. It can be done with grace and compassion. You can acknowledge the request and express gratitude for the opportunity, but still decline. It's about being honest with yourself and others and recognizing that you can't do everything. And that's okay. Six, finding balance, the golden mean, Balance is a concept that we often hear about, but achieving it can feel elusive. In today's fast-paced world, we're constantly juggling multiple responsibilities, from work to family to social obligations. Finding balance doesn't mean giving equal time and energy to everything. It means finding the right proportions that allow you to live a fulfilling and sustainable life. This is where the concept of the golden mean comes in. The golden mean is a philosophical idea that dates back to Aristotle, who believed that virtue lies in moderation. It's about finding the middle ground between two extremes, excess and deficiency. In the context of our lives, this means finding a balance between giving and receiving, between work and rest, between self-care and caring for others. 
Think about a time in your life when you felt truly balanced. Maybe it was a period when you were able to manage your work, relationships and personal well-being without feeling overwhelmed. You likely felt a sense of harmony where everything seemed to fall into place. This is the golden mean in action, a state of balance that allows you to thrive. Now think about a time when you were out of balance. Perhaps you were working too much and neglecting your personal life. Or maybe you were so focused on helping others that you forgot to take care of yourself. When we're out of balance, life becomes more difficult. We feel stressed, exhausted and unfulfilled. This is why finding balance is so important. It's the key to living a life that is both productive and joyful. The Stoics understood the importance of balance. They believed that living a virtuous life meant finding the right balance between our desires and our duties. This doesn't mean that we should avoid challenges or discomfort, but rather that we should approach life with a sense of moderation. As Marcus Aurelius wrote, Live not as though you had a thousand years ahead of you. Fate is at your elbow. Make yourself good while life and power are still yours. Finding balance also means being mindful of the ebb and flow of life. There will be times when you need to give more to others and times when you need to focus on yourself. The key is to recognize when you're tipping too far in one direction and make adjustments accordingly. This might mean setting boundaries, saying no, or taking a step back to recharge. In our quest for balance, it's important to remember that it's not about perfection. There will be times when you're out of balance, and that's okay. What matters is that you're aware of it and take steps to correct it. Think of balance as a dance, where you're constantly adjusting your steps to stay in rhythm with the music of life. The golden mean can also be applied to our emotions. In Stoic philosophy, the goal is not to suppress our emotions, but to find a balance between feeling and reason. This means acknowledging our emotions, but not letting them control us. It's about finding the right balance between passion and reason, between joy and sorrow, between hope and fear. So, how can you find balance in your life? Start by identifying the areas where you feel out of balance. Are you giving too much and receiving too little? Are you working too hard and neglecting your personal life? Once you've identified the imbalances, take steps to correct them. This might mean setting new priorities, adjusting your schedule, or simply taking time to rest. Finding balance is an ongoing process, but it's one that is well worth the effort. When you find the right balance, you're able to live a life that is both meaningful and sustainable. You're able to give your best to others while also taking care of yourself. And that is the essence of the golden mean, a life of harmony, purpose, and fulfillment. 7. Self-respect and boundaries. Self-respect and boundaries are two sides of the same coin. Without boundaries, self-respect can easily erode, leading us to feel overwhelmed, taken advantage of, and disconnected from our true selves. In a world that often prioritizes productivity over well-being, learning to set and maintain boundaries is an essential act of self-care. It's about recognizing your worth, valuing your time, and protecting your energy from being depleted by others. Imagine a time when you respected yourself enough to say no or walk away from a situation that didn't serve you. How did that make you feel? Perhaps you felt a sense of empowerment, a reminder that you're in control of your own life. This feeling, however, doesn't always come naturally. Many of us have been conditioned to believe that putting others first is a virtue, even at the expense of our own well-being. But the truth is, Without self-respect and clear boundaries, it becomes increasingly difficult to give to others in a healthy, sustainable way. The Stoic philosophers understood the importance of self-respect and boundaries. They believed that each person has a duty to protect their own inner peace and maintain control over their emotions. As Epictetus famously said, no one is free who is not master of themselves. This mastery begins with setting boundaries. 
knowing what is acceptable to you and what is not, and having the courage to stand by those decisions, even when it's uncomfortable. Think about a time when you let your boundaries slip. Maybe you agreed to take on extra work because you didn't want to disappoint your boss, or perhaps you stayed in a toxic relationship because you didn't want to hurt the other person's feelings. In those moments, you likely felt a sense of inner conflict, knowing deep down that you were compromising your own well-being. This is where self-respect comes into play. It's about recognizing that you deserve to be treated with kindness and consideration, and that includes how you treat yourself. Setting boundaries can feel challenging, especially if you're someone who is used to putting others first. But it's important to remember that boundaries are not walls. They're guidelines for how you want to be treated. They help you communicate your needs clearly and prevent resentment from building up over time. When you respect your own boundaries, you're teaching others to respect them as well. Consider a time when you successfully set a boundary. Perhaps you told a friend you couldn't meet up because you needed time to recharge. Or maybe you declined a work project that would have stretched you too thin. How did that feel? Likely you felt a sense of relief and pride in yourself for honoring your own needs. This is the power of self-respect. It allows you to make decisions that are in alignment with your values and well-being. Boundaries also play a crucial role in maintaining healthy relationships. When you set clear boundaries, you're able to show up fully for others without feeling drained or resentful. It creates a foundation of mutual respect, where both parties understand and honor each other's limits. This is particularly important in close relationships, where the lines between giving and receiving can sometimes blur. By setting boundaries, you ensure that your relationships are built on a foundation of respect, not obligation. The key to setting effective boundaries is communication. It's about being honest with yourself and others about what you need and what you're willing to tolerate. This might mean having difficult conversations or standing firm in the face of pushback. But remember, every time you set a boundary, you're reinforcing your own self-respect. You're sending a message to yourself and others that you value your well-being and that you're not willing to compromise it. Over time, setting boundaries becomes easier. It becomes a natural extension of your self-respect, a way of honoring your own needs and protecting your inner peace. And the more you practice it, the more you'll find that others respond positively to your boundaries. After all, people tend to respect those who respect themselves. Eight, the ripple effect, influence of self-improvement. Self-improvement isn't just about bettering yourself, it's about creating a positive ripple effect that extends to those around you. When you focus on becoming the best version of yourself, you inspire others to do the same. Your actions, attitudes and choices have a profound impact on the people in your life, whether you realize it or not. This is the ripple effect of self-improvement, and it's one of the most powerful ways to influence the world around you. Think about a time when you witnessed someone else's growth and how it inspired you. Maybe it was a friend who took control of their health, a colleague who pursued a passion project, or a family member who overcame a personal challenge. Their journey likely sparked something within you, motivating you to reflect on your own life and make positive changes. This is the beauty of the ripple effect. It shows us that our actions can have far-reaching consequences, often in ways we can't predict. The Stoic philosophers believed that the best way to influence others was by embodying the virtues you wish to see in the world. As Marcus Aurelius wrote, waste no more time arguing what a good man should be, be one. This simple yet profound idea reminds us that leading by example is often more effective than trying to persuade others through words alone. When you live in alignment with your values, others take notice and your actions become a source of inspiration. Consider a time when you made a positive change in your life and how it impacted those around you. Maybe you decided to prioritize your mental health and as a result, 
your relationships became stronger, or perhaps you focused on personal growth and your newfound confidence inspired others to pursue their own goals. These are examples of the ripple effect in action, small changes in your own life that create waves of positive influence in the lives of others. But the ripple effect isn't just about inspiring others, it's also about creating a supportive environment for self-improvement. When you surround yourself with people who are committed to growth, you're more likely to stay motivated and continue your own journey. This creates a feedback loop where everyone benefits from each other's progress. It's a powerful reminder that self-improvement isn't a solitary endeavor, it's a collective one. However, it's important to remember that the ripple effect works both ways. Just as your positive actions can inspire others, negative behaviors can also have an impact. If you neglect your well-being, engage in harmful habits, or treat others poorly, those around you are likely to be affected. This is why self-improvement isn't just a personal responsibility, it's a social one. By striving to be the best version of yourself, you're contributing to a healthier, more positive environment for everyone. The ripple effect also extends beyond your immediate circle. When you improve yourself, you're better equipped to contribute to your community and the world at large. Your actions, no matter how small, can create a chain reaction that leads to meaningful change. Whether it's through volunteering, mentoring, or simply being a positive presence in the lives of others, your self-improvement has the potential to make a difference on a larger scale. Think back to a time when you felt like you were part of something bigger than yourself. Maybe it was a project, a movement, or even a simple act of kindness that had a ripple effect on others. How did that feel? Likely, it gave you a sense of purpose and fulfillment, knowing that your actions were contributing to the greater good. This is the power of the ripple effect. It shows us that our lives are interconnected and that our choices matter. In the end, self-improvement isn't just about personal growth. It's about making a positive impact on the world around you. By focusing on becoming the best version of yourself, you're not only improving your own life, but you're also creating a ripple effect that inspires and uplifts others. This is the true power of self-improvement, a journey that benefits not just you, but everyone you touch. 9. Call to action. Embrace discomfort and lead by example. Now, it's time to put all of this into action. The concepts of overgiving, self-care, true generosity, and setting boundaries are powerful tools, but they require practice and commitment. One of the key challenges you'll face on this journey is discomfort. Growth often happens outside of our comfort zones, and embracing that discomfort is essential for making lasting changes in your life. Discomfort is a sign that you're pushing beyond your limits, challenging old habits, and creating space for something new. It's a necessary part of the process, and learning to embrace it rather than shy away from it can be incredibly liberating. When you lean into discomfort, you're signaling to yourself that you're ready to grow, ready to take control of your life, and ready to lead by example. In the context of everything we've discussed, embracing discomfort might mean setting boundaries when you're used to people-pleasing, saying no when you're accustomed to saying yes, or practicing true generosity without expecting anything in return. These actions can feel challenging at first, but they are the very steps that will lead to a more balanced, fulfilling life. By leading by example, you're not only transforming your own life, but you're also inspiring others to do the same. Remember the ripple effect? When you take the courageous step of embracing discomfort and making positive changes, others will notice. Your actions will serve as a beacon of hope, showing others that it's possible to live a life of purpose, balance, and true generosity. This call to action is not just about making changes for yourself, it's about creating a better world for those around you. Your journey of self-improvement, of finding balance and setting boundaries, has the power to influence others in profound ways. 
It's a reminder that we are all connected and that by lifting ourselves up, we also lift up those around us. So, embrace the discomfort, take the first step and lead by example. You have the power to create positive change in your life and in the lives of others. The journey may not always be easy, but it is one that is deeply rewarding. And in the end, it's a journey that will lead you to a life of greater purpose, fulfillment and true generosity. As we wrap up this exploration into the dangers of overgiving, remember that true strength lies not in how much you give, but in how wisely you manage your resources, both for yourself and others. By embracing the stoic principles of self-care, boundaries and balance, you can transform your generosity from a draining obligation into a sustainable and fulfilling way of life. It's not about doing less, it's about doing what truly matters with intention and purpose. Drop a hundred in the comments if you've watched this far. This shows that you're part of the 0.01% who actually finish what they start. If you're serious about making lasting changes in your life and continuing this journey of growth and self-improvement, make sure to join our community by subscribing to the channel. We're here to support you every step of the way.